Hello. Today we're going to tell you the facts about the AK-47. The AK-47 made it into the Guinness Book of World Records as the most common in the world. This assault rifle is a favorite weapon of Somali pirates, and its price ranges from $10 in Afghanistan to $4,000 in India. The Kalashnikov assault rifle is currently in service in 106 countries worldwide. The Kalashnikov assault rifle is depicted on the coats of arms of some states. It is depicted, for example, on the coat of arms of Zimbabwe and flag of Mozambique, the coat of arms of the Asian state of East Timor. From 1984 to 97, an AK-47 was depicted on the emblem of the African state of Burkina Faso. The AK appears on the emblem of the Lebanese group Hezbollah. Former Iraqi President Saddam Hussein had a gold-plated AK-47 in a modified design. Also, a gold AK-47 was found in the possession of Muammar Gaddafi. The legendary nature of this assault rifle is hard to dispute, but there are a couple of questions about the design itself, why are the Kalashnikov blueprints are virtually identical to those of the German STG-44, designed by Hugo Schmeisser during World War II? How could a Kalashnikov, with no university or even secondary technical education, with only seven rural school grades could have invented the world's most popular assault rifle in the world? In this video we'll try to answer these questions and to explore the fate of the legendary AK-47 and its creator, Mikhail Kalashnikov. Don't forget subscribe to the channel and share the video on your social networks. You can now support us on Patreon. Link in description. On November 10, 1919, in the ordinary Russian village of Kuria, in Altai territory the man who literally turned the modern history of all small arms. That man's name was Mikhail Timofeyevich Kalashnikov. He was the 17th child in a large peasant family. In 1930, the family of his father, Timofey Kalashnikov, was exiled to the Tomsk region. From childhood, Mikhail was interested in technology, with an interest in exploring the construction and operation of various mechanisms. At the end of the seventh grade, with his parents' permission, he returned to Altai, but he couldn't find work. After studying there for another year, he decided to return to his mother and his stepfather, where he obtained a passport by forging the stamp of the local commandant's office. At 18 Mikhail left his home village and moved to Almaty city region of the Kazakh SSR, for a year he worked there as a technical secretary of the political department of the Turkestan-Siberian Railway. In the autumn of the 1938, Kalashnikov was drafted into the Red Army. After the junior commander's course, he served in the western Ukraine. There, he developed an inertial gunshot counter for a tank gun, a device for the TT pistol to improve firing efficiency. The engine meter was the first invention of the young tank driver Kalashnikov, which was recommended for serial mass production as early as 1940. Of the Second World War, the Soviet command can't organized its production. General Zhukov rewarded Kalashnikov with a personal watch. After a talk with Zhukov, Mikhail was sent to the Kiev Tank Technical School to make samples of his inventions, and after completing the tests to the Voroshilov plant in Leningrad to refine and put into production. Kalashnikov met World War II in August 1941 as a tank commander with the rank of staff sergeant. In October near Bryansk he was seriously wounded. In the hospital he began to make sketches and drawings, based on his own combat experience. Back in Almaty, Kalashnikov showed a sample of his first model submachine gun. Academician Blagonrovov wrote such a conclusion about the sample, the Kalashnikov submachine gun is more difficult to manufacture and more expensive than the PPSH-41 and PPS, and requires the use of scarce and slow milling work. Therefore, despite its many advantages, low weight, short length, single shot, it can be considered as a solid submachine gun. It is therefore difficult and expensive to produce, and despite many attractive features, lightweight, short length, single shot, good combination of interceptor and fuse, in its present form is of no industrial interest. From 1942, Kalashnikov worked at the central the small arms and mortar range. Here, in 1944, 
he created a prototype self-loading carbine, which did not go into series production, but but it served in part as a prototype for the AK. In 1945 Mikhail Kalashnikov started development of the automatic weapon for the intermediate cartridge of the 43 model 7.62. The Kalashnikov automatic rifle won the 1947 competition and was accepted for service. And now we back to 1942. In this year, Adolf Hitler was presented with two examples of assault rifles, the MKB.42, W, designed by Eric Walther and the MKB.42, H, designed by Hugo Schmeisser. The final series of comparative tests showed the following. The Walther sample rifle was assessed as excessively difficult to handle and sensitive to contamination. The Schmeisser assault rifle, on the other hand, was simple, rugged and easy to assemble and disassemble, but heavier than its competitor and worse balanced. Based on the results of military trials, the MKB.42 of the Schmeisser was adopted as the prototype. The MKB.42 by Schmeisser was adopted but with a number of modifications and even Schmeisser's MKB.42 was adopted as the prototype, but, according to the tests, some changes and modifications were made, based on the Walther design. This rifle was finally adopted by the end of the 1943 war. It was known as STG-44, Sturmjur, by 1943. The STG-44 was officially called STG-44 by the end of 1943. Officially, the STG-44 rifle was only in service with the DDR police, the army of the FRG, Yugoslavia, Syria, Switzerland, France and other countries. After being decommissioned, many STG-44s found their way through the black market into the hands of rebels. Following its withdrawal from service, many STG-44s entered the hands of rebels and terrorists, and are still in use by them. Many STG-44s are used by illegal groups in what is now Syria. Despite the merits of the new weapon, it hasn't had much of an impact on the course of hostilities World War II it did not make a significant impact. Until the German surrender, the STG-44 remained the weapon of the elite formations. The STG-44, for all its faults, was indeed the first assault rifle that formed the familiar face of all modern armies around the world. In April 1945, the Americans, without much interest in the design of Hugo Schmeisser and Hennel's weapon design. For the Americans, the STG-44 assault rifle the STG-44 was too bulky, heavy and unreliable. In February 1945, the STG-44 was placed at the disposal of the USSR under the Allied Repatriation Treaty. Unlike the Allies, the Soviets were interested in the developments of Hugo Schmeisser's developments. All of Hennel's design and technological documentation relating to the design of all kinds of weapons. Of the Soviet group of forces immediately seized along with the remaining weaponry, including a hundred STG-44 rifles. STG-44 and ammunition. From October of the same year Hugo Schmeisser, together with other prominent German designers began working commission for selecting technologies and samples of German armaments of interest to the USSR. Hugo Schmeisser had lived alone in Eishevsk city since October 1946, without his family. He worked at Eishevsk plant as a group of German designers. The territory of the plant was guarded by the KGB around the clock. Schmeisser and his colleagues worked in areas related to the conversion of post-war Soviet production, they advised young designers of the Izmash small arms factory. And now back to the developments of Mikhail Kalashnikov. After the final stage of testing, Kalashnikov arrives in Izhevsk in 1947 with the finished AK-47. The Izhevsk factory was technologically not ready. In 1950, Izmash designers had to redesign the receiver for AK. It is difficult to assess Schmeisser's contribution to the development of the Kalashnikov assault rifle, as official documents are not available to historians. They're still classified, and Hugo didn't leave any memoirs, revealing the details of his work in the USSR. Weapons experts, 
after comparing the the comparison of the AK-47 and the STG-44 leads to the following conclusions, both models have many similarities in overall design and trigger system. After the comparison of the two weapons experts concluded that both models have much in common. The German designer, for his Schmeisser STG-44, relied on the developments of the Hollick company. It was produced by Hollick as early as 1920, and its first batch of semi-automatic rifles was delivered by Hollick. They made the first ZH-29 semi-automatic rifle in 1920. But despite the external similarity, the design of these rifles, on the inside, is not the same at all. They are completely different. Did Kalashnikov see the STG-44 and its drawings? Of course, he did. There are no weapons designers who build their weapons from scratch without a clue about their construction and the latest developments and innovations. The differences between the STG-44 and the AK-47 quite a few, one, the assault rifle has a bolt-locking device to keep the bolt from clogging. After the bolt is cocked, it stays in the open position. On AK-47 the bolt curtain moves together with the return spring. Secondly, AK-47 magazines are fitted with a special tooth that which allows the magazine to be hooked into the housing. The STG-44 magazines are inserted into the magazine housing. Third, the STG-44 has a switch fire lever above the right thumb. While all AK-47S have the switch is on the right, above the trigger. This clearly indicates the different design of the two weapons. And the fourth is the bolt, which is where there's a very strong design difference. On the AK-47, locking the barrel is done by rotating the bolt, on the STG-44, it's by tilting the bolt. This is the most important design difference between these assault rifles. In 1959, the production of the Kalashnikov AKM began. Kalashnikov AKM, an upgraded assault rifle. The new stamped receiver reduced weight of the weapon and significantly increased the number of assault rifles. In the late 1960s, the weapon factory only Eishevsk plant, over half a million AKMs were produced per year. After the U.S. Army adopted the M16 rifle for service in 1964. U.S. Army adopted the M16 rifle, chambered for the new 5.56x45 ammunition, and the Soviet military began working on its own small arms. Soviet designers began to work on their own Lopals ammunition. It reduces the weight of the ammunition, the bullet of lower mass has higher muzzle velocity, which ensures a high velocity trajectory of fire. In 1972, a group of designers led by Sabelnikov created a new cartridge, and in 1974 the new AK-74 assault rifle was adopted. In 1979, Kalashnikov automatic rifle with folding stock, AKS-74U. The assault rifle quickly gained acceptance with the Russian police, where it is still in use today. In Afghanistan Soviet helicopter pilots carried this assault rifle in a waist holster, and the KGB invented a special case for it, could be pulled out at the touch of a button. By the end of 80s the following four assault rifles were in service, AK-74, AKS-74 as well as their versions for the AK-74H and AKS-74N. Wooden parts were replaced by the more reliable made of glass polyamide. The AK-74M remains the primary small arms of the armed forces of the Russian Federation. The 100th series of automatic rifles was created on the basis of the AK-74M, named after the 100th production facility in the town of Izhevsk, the series was named after the Izhevsk factory where the rifles were manufactured. The series included AK-101 and AK-102 rifles, chambered for 556 by 45 ammunition, and AK-103 the production line included the AK-101 and AK-102 rifles, chambered for the 7.62. 39 ammunition, and the AK-105 rifle for the 5.45. 39 round. The AK rifles have one drawback, which is that it is difficult to integrate into standard automatic weapons. The new AK-200 has a scope rail on the top of the receiver, fore-end, and butt stock. In addition, 
these rifles feature adjustable buttstock, new pistol grip and a new detachable and a new flame arrester, which reduces flash when firing at night. The new AK-12 and AK-15 assault rifles were introduced to the public in 2016. In January 2018, both rifles were recommended for acceptance for service. The 7.62, 51 ammunition was introduced in 1952 and is still in use around the world. It is the cartridge used by such legends Belgian FN FAL rifle and German G3 rifle. Popularity of this cartridge pushed world leading manufacturers to develop new weapons with this ammunition. The AK 308 is designed for countries that traditionally use the 762 51 cartridge. The AK-308 design uses elements of the AK-12 rifle, forend, adjustable buttstock, and cover the stock, adjustable buttstock, and receiver cover. Such is the history of controversy around the AK-47. What do you think about it? Write in comments. You can now support us on Patreon. Link in description. Subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.